Let's do lead code. Cool, cool. Largest sub matrix with rearrangements. You're given a binary matrix of size n times n, and you're allowed to rearrange the columns of the matrix in any order. Turn the area of the largest sub matrix with the matrix. Every element of the sub matrix is one after reordering the columns optimally. Up to 10 to the power of 5 elements. Okay, so I had to look at the hint. First hint. For each column, find the number of consecutive ones ending at each position. Fair enough, so we go through each column and we count number of consecutive ones. When we reach a zero, we restart the count from zero. But then how does that help us find the answer? Okay, so here we are at the whiteboard. Let's say um, you have a bunch of columns and these are all consecutive ones uh, down this, these columns. And we've counted how many ones uh, ending at the last position here. And we do this for each row of the matrix. Given this row, for this row, uh, what's the maximum area? Well, if we sort all of these numbers, so let's say this is uh, 5, uh, 3, 4, 2, 5, 2. Let's say we are sorting it in decreasing order, so that means we get 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 2. And to find the maximum area, I could possibly get from this is something like, uh, let's say, for example, the indexes are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's the index. These are the number of consecutive ones. The answer would be, well, I would go through each of these. Then I'll do the min so far. The min so far is actually the item at the current position because it's decreasing. So it's actually going to be whatever this value is. Let's call this a value array. It's going to be value of i times i plus 1. That's the area. I'm going to take the max out of all these, or all i, in the range 0 to 5. So in this case, what's the max area? Well, let's calculate one by one. So we have um, 5 times 1, that's going to be 5, or we could have 5 times 2, which is 10, or we can have um, 4 times 3, which is 12, or we have 3 times 4, which is also 12, or we have 2 times 5, which is 10, or we have 2 times 6, which is 12. And we take the max out of all of these, it's going to be 12. So that's the answer for one row, and we do this for all possible rows, and then we'll have our answer. Let's give that a go. So I want a bunch of vectors, a vector of vectors. Let's call it ones. Number of rows would be matrix.size. Then we want to go through each column one at a time, and then go through each row at a time. So matrix i j will give us the current value in the column we're looping through. We keep track of, let's call it dp0. Uh, if current value is equal to zero, I want dp equal to zero. I also want plus plus dp. We just restart the count and then set ones at the current row, dot uh, push back the current dp value. Cool, and then we can go through each of the rows and just sort the row. I kind of want to sort it in reverse order, so once I've done that, I could go through each of the rows, put answer here, and then and then we can go through j is equal to zero, j less than matrix at, let's do actually ones.size, and then we can do ones at, i dot size plus plus j keep track of a row answer the row answer is equal to the maximum of the row answer and whatever ones at i j is times the current index plus one and then at the end i want to do answers equal to max of the answer and the row answer and at the end just return the answer Okay, that's four. Let's try a different case. That's working. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's submit that and see if that works. Awesome. That does work. Sweet. Um, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to keep eating the code.